Here we'll see the life and times of an era, including a look at the Kennedy family and the accomplishments of President Kennedy's administration. Ironically, the Kennedy family has responded to the museum with silence, but the director of the John F. Kennedy Library in Boston calls the exhibit morbid. He says a museum should be a celebration of life, not death. But the people here who run the sixth floor exhibit reply with a quote from President Kennedy himself, who said, you don't serve history by burying your past. Edie? Bill, America won't let go of what happened here in Dallas. When we return, we'll meet the latest generation obsessed with the death of John Kennedy. When the first two shots were fired, I simply thought it was uh, firecrackers. And, uh, but of course, there was, when the third shot was fired, there was no doubt uh, what had happened. Bill turned to me and he said, that's it, hit the ground, and we put the kids on the ground behind us and covered them with our body. It was a sad day for Dallas, and I think it was a very sad day for the state of Texas. Welcome back to the School Book Depository in Dallas. Within 48 hours of President Kennedy's death, Lee Harvey Oswald was dead as well, killed by Dallas nightclub owner Jack Ruby. The shooting fueled speculation Oswald was part of a conspiracy to kill Kennedy and that he'd been silenced. Many Americans have never been satisfied with official explanations of the Kennedy assassination. As our correspondent Skip Hollinsworth reports, there is always someone who wants to know more. The president's car is now turning on to Elm Street. They were little boys in 1963. Jim Moore, just four years old. It appears as though something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. Larry Harris was only nine. It appears as though someone in the limousine might have been hit by the gunfire. Carl Henry, age eight. Parkland Hospital has been advised to stand by for a severe gunshot wound. It all happened a quarter of a century ago, yet the mystery of Kennedy's death haunts the imagination. Who really pulled the trigger of this rifle? Was there someone else shooting from the grassy knoll? Could Jack Ruby have really been a hitman? I think it's the great American mystery. I think for me it's solving the quote unsolvable crime. It seems to me like there's something being hidden. Um, so whether it's myself or someone else, we're going to keep on keeping on. 25 years later, a new generation has emerged to investigate who might have killed Kennedy and why. For them, it is an obsession. They treat Dealey Plaza like it's hallowed ground. It's not so much that they think they're going to find a new clue here, but this place is a touchstone to their belief that something very sinister happened back on that November day, something we do not yet understand. When he was only 14, Jim Moore was asking his father to drive him from their Arkansas home to Dallas so he could study Dealey Plaza. Larry Harris, now 36, got a summer job at the school book depository when he was a teenager just to investigate the sixth floor. Carl Henry, who's 34, moved to Dallas five years ago in order to talk to the last of the eyewitnesses, like Jean Hill, the school teacher in the famous red coat who thinks she might have seen another gunman. I looked up, I saw a flashlight and a puff of smoke from the knoll. And I knew a shot had come from there. Much of what they've and learned, of course, has been known for years. But they know that with just one more piece of evidence, they might break it wide open. Did you have a, an impression, Phil, as to where the source of the shot was, where it came from? They all live in Dallas and maintain their own professions. But during their free time, they investigate the murder of a president. Harris often returns to Oswald's old neighborhood, where he was accused of shooting Dallas police officer J.D. Tippett, or even here to the old Texas theater, where Oswald was found by police sitting in the chair that's now painted black. There's no escape from it. I think about it uh, in all of my waking hours. You're going to find the facts in Dallas, Texas, because that's where it happened. A sort of strange cottage industry has sprung up among researchers, all dedicated to finding the alleged conspiracy behind Kennedy's death. In Dallas, a Kennedy conspiracy group meets monthly at a college campus. In an old building in Washington, D.C., the assassination archives have been created to collect anything written on the assassination, including more than 200 books. 